Hey, what's up, people? Um, about a year ago, a little over a year ago, because it was after my no, a couple years ago, a couple years ago, because my mom had had passed. Um, I got on social media and I talked about uh some lands and property that my family on my mother's side had owned over a hundred years, and um, and today I found out that we pretty much have lost the land, <clears throat> and uh really kind of powerless to do anything because what they do what these these I don't even have names for them what these people do so called people walking dogs really no dogs aren't, are even better than these folks but anyway whatever the, these people what they do is they get you in court well let me let me back up okay this cat it's like over 200 acres of land that the Calhouns and McGaskies own my family, my mother's family, owns. Have owned it for a long time. I've heard some stories about grandfather having to sleep by, by uh, have a shotgun by his door because the clan was coming and trying to take his land. This is in Louisiana, Nagatouch, Louisiana. 240 acres, I think it is. Anyway, this guy gets in there. He buys a little piece of the property. And uh, what, he, what he starts to do is once he gets in there, he knows the laws. And once he gets in there, then he petitions to get all the property. He bought like eight acres or whatever it was, 20 acres, whatever it was. Shouldn't even let him buy that. But you can't force, like when there's heirs involved, when there's a lot of heirs involved, you can't force somebody not to sell their land. So that's fine. But anyway, this dude gets in there and he doesn't just want his little acreage. Then he goes to the court because he knows that the law um, works in his advantage when there's a lot of heirs and there's a lot of heirs to this property. So he knows that. So what he does is in his devilish, I don't like to use the word devil because you give people too much power when you call them devil because the devil is supposed to be real powerful, I guess. But um, in his devilish ways, what he does, he knows the law, so he knows all these heirs are involved. He can petition the court because it's hard to get in touch with all these heirs. He knows that, so he petitions the court to get all the property. So we've been back and forth, and a lot of us don't have money. So the court, so we get lawyers, and these are foul people too. You know, all you damn lawyers, most of you guys are foul. Most of you are foul. You work for the rich, and you, you, you oppress and exploit the poor. So I don't have much high, I don't have a high opinion of you either. So, um, so what he does is he petitions the court to get this land. And so we go, we go to court, the family goes to court, and every time we have court, this is what, and I'm just going to call it. You, people are going to be upset about it, but people know how I am, So, but I'm just going to call it. This is what white folks do. This is exactly what they do, and I'm sorry to play the race card, but this is what they do, and they've done this historically, um, in the South especially. This is in Nagatouch, Louisiana. So they go, we go to court, and every time we go to court, they continue it. What that means is you show up at court, and then they tell you, no, we can't have court. We're going to push it back. Then they set another date, and then... The same thing happens. They keep doing it and doing it. Meanwhile, your court, your your lawyer fees, your attorney fees, keep escalating and escalating and escalating and escalating until until it's to the point now. I was just talking to my cousin. It's to the point now where what we owe the lawyer is probably more than the land, or will be if we keep going up and up. So we can no longer do it. You know, it's a lot of us that don't have a bunch of money. We don't have fifteen, twenty thousand dollars just set down on something. And they know this. Then they know this. So we're in danger of losing the land because of um, just greed. You know, and I'm sure the indigenous people, the Native Americans here, they know this story very, very well. It's what these folks do. It's just, it's just, it's just. I don't even have words for it. And I talk a lot. But it's just amazing how greedy people are. They don't want just theirs. They don't want just theirs. They buy a little lot. They don't want just that. They want theirs, yours, his, hers, theirs. You know, that's that's how they do it. And the courts work with them. It's just this, this goddamn game that they play. The courts work with them. And they probably all boy, you know, they probably go drinking together or whatever. So they keep continuing it and continuing it and then... It, it just es But meanwhile, while they're continuing it, the lawyer, who is foul, 
probably. Oh, no, no I don't have to say probably. He is. Um, so, uh, or she is, whoever, whatever the case may be. And they just, and so the, it just keeps escalating to the point where the people that are trying to keep the land can't afford the lawyer fees. And, and that's where we are now with our land. So we're getting ready to lose land that we got legally. Our, my great-grandfather or great-great-grandfather, I'm not sure which one, in the 1800s had this land legal. Fast forward 120, 30 years forward, here comes this dude who sees it, because I think it has oil on it or something. Um, he sees it as, oh, these folks, we're going to take it from these ignorant black folk. And that's the, and you know we're not all ignorant, but we don't have the finances. We don't have the finances, and it's so sad. You know, it's so sad. And I'm thinking my grandfather or my great grandfather or my great grand great grand grandfather, whatever he is to me, I think he'd be my great grandfather. But anyway, he must be rolling in his grave or or his spirit is walking around beating himself up or whatever because he had to work so you can imagine if he had that land in the late 1800s what he had to go through to keep that land and here we are in 2016 2017 now and this dude just comes you know and this guy I don't know his name and I, my, I asked my cousin can I say his name on social media and not get sued or get you know defamation of character um, she said, I don't know. So, I don't know his name anyway. I probably would call it if I knew it. But um, I didn't ask her for his name. But uh, this guy has a history down there in Louisiana, Nagatush and all in Louisiana, of taking people's land. But this is just... Uh, this is just the way it, it goes. This is, this, is, this is the way it's been. And I asked my cousin, you know, I, this is one of the reasons... And some of you religious folks, y'all going to get on me about this, but I'm going to tell you. This is a question I have for any God that you want to call, whatever you call him, whatever you call her, whatever you call it. How does a group of people continuously, continuously get over on another group of people under this all? And this group of people that they always getting over on. It's constantly praying. It's constantly praying. But this group is constantly getting over on this particular group. I don't understand it. Either that guy is a punk and don't exist, or we're praying to the wrong God. Something. Or this other group who's always stealing from us, taking from us, knows something that we don't know. I don't know. It's just amazing. So, just found that out today. That we're probably going to lose that land uh, to some guy who wasn't happy with just 8 acres or 12 acres or whatever he got. And um, I want to say, well, most of them are dead now. But to my uncle, who was the one that sold this to this guy, shame on you. Shame on you. I know you're 80-something now and um, don't know any better. Shame on you. Shame on you. Because if you're in your 80s, you know what it was like in the South when you were a little boy. You grew up in Texas. So you know what it was like in the South when you were a little boy. So shame on you. You know, as hard as you know it had to have been for our great-grandfather, and you're not even related to the family by blood, but you talked to Aunt Gladys, who is related to the family by blood, to sell this land. So you know, but you know how hard it was for a black person to keep land in the South uh, over a hundred years ago, and for you to just give it away for some pennies, for some trinkets. You should have sold it to the family, but you wanted, you know, you 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 took the price up way up high, so people in the family couldn't afford it to get some little ducats, and now you let this this vermin, this this. Uh, I don't even have a word for it. I don't have a word for it. But you let this guy get in there, and this guy ends up wanting all the land, and is probably going to get it. And probably, and and the reason he's going to get it is because he has the resources. He has the capital. He has the capital. So, um, I'm pissed. I, I really, I you know, I, I don't know. I know 
to some people watching this or who are going to watch this, like, don't give a shit, you know, it doesn't have anything to do with me. But um, it's just, I don't know, it's just the principle of the thing. You know, you have, but you're not, it's like what they did with the indigenous people here. We want, first of all, you shouldn't even been here, period. Okay, but you get here. They treat you nice, okay, then you get a little land. You write up a treaty, but that, that treaty is not enough land, so you ignore that treaty, write up another treaty, and just keep taking land. And then you ignore that treaty, and you keep taking land. Next thing you know, you have the whole United States of America and Mexico is yours from all these false treaties. I don't understand that. I don't understand. I, I don't understand greed. I guess because I've never had a lot of money. I don't understand greed. I don't understand greed that says I have to have everything. Everything. I don't want you to have anything. You know, so um, just a lesson. Just a lesson. Um, when you own it, keep it if you can. Um, but that's what they do. That's what they do. So we need to stop praying so much and or I don't know or pray to some something else because we're losing we constantly lose we constantly lose and we constantly forgive we need to stop losing and we need to stop forgiving because this fucker he's not getting any better he doesn't have a conscience he's greedy now you can call him whatever you want to call him you can say he looks like whatever you want to say he looks like but we all know what he looks like we all know what he looks like, so you you call you can call me whatever you want to call me, but that's um that's how I feel about it. It's, it's ridiculous. It's it's absolutely ridiculous that these folks continue to be so greedy, and we're gonna see it in L.A. We already seen it in Harlem. We're gonna see it all over all the cities. What do they do? They come in, they go way up on the price because we don't own anything. And then we have to leave for the little snobby nosed kids to come in there and walk their little um, rare dogs and shit up the street. And we have to leave. Same picture, same story, different year. So, um, I don't know. What did I learn from this? You gotta own. You gotta own. And not, well, you're not even safe owning because we owned. It's just so many of us. When this guy got in, he knew that, you know, you can't get, if you got 40 heirs on a property, on 250 acres of property, it's almost impossible to get all the heirs. And he knew that. And he knew the laws. Probably got lawyer friends and judge friends and all that stuff. So, that's what he did. So, it's not even safe owning it. I don't know what you have to do. You have to barricade it. And indigenous people are going through the same thing, have gone through the same thing. Um, it's what they do. I don't know. I, you know, honestly, I used to believe in karma. I really, I, I really used to believe. But the longer I live, I'm thinking some people just never pay for shit. They just never pay for shit. They never have any retributions. They just get over on people their whole lives. Their whole lives. They just... And they never pay for anything. You know, that's crazy. And, you know, gr growing up, we're brought up in, a, um, in this Christian thing where you reap what you sow. That's bullshit. I don't believe that. Sorry, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. You know, r read about King Leopold and what he did in the Congo. You know, read about what these American presidents did here in, in, to the indigenous people. Yeah. Karma? Reap what you sow? I don't think so. That just makes, that's something to pacify us. Make us feel like, oh, okay, it's going to come back to them. No, that shit ain't coming back to them. You know. So, um, just wanted to vent that. Didn't do, do any good for anybody else. That's okay. I just, want, I just wanted to express it. Uh, so I expressed it. But yeah, we're losing about 240, I think it's 240 acres in Nagatush to the greed of someone who doesn't need all that land. But I think it's some oil on there. 
You know, I think it's some oil. I know. Well, I know there's some oil on it. Um, I don't know how much. He probably knows. And um, I don't know. It's amazing, though. It's amazing. But anyway, it is what it is. And um, I don't know. Anyway, okay, I'm done. I, I don't. That's all I can say. Me venting and getting upset is not going to change anything. But just wanted to show you how this system works. How this is the greatest country in the world. How it works. How it really works. Especially when it comes to poor people. Especially when it comes to poor people. Um, Alright. Well, I'm out. Uh, that's why I write, y'all. I don't when they when people talk about a, a writer's block. I if I live to be 150, I won't have writer's block in this country. There's always something to talk about and write about here. Always, always. I'm out. Peace.